Hello, my name is A2K and today I'll be doing a Minecraft tutorial video and the topic of interest is zero tick farms. Zero tick farms are extremely useful. How useful? Well, behind me is a decently large traditional sugarcane farm with 24 plants and beside it is a zero tick farm with only one plant. After 60 minutes, the large farm gave me 22 Bruh. items and the one plant farm gave me, well, yeah, if you ask me, that efficiency difference is a pretty big deal, and today I'll be showing you how to build these variations of this magic zero tick farm for all plants. Zero ticking in a nutshell. Zero ticking is when we update a block so that we convince a plant on top of it to check the block underneath it. If the block exists as a suitable block, it grows. If it's not, then the plant pops off. With a piston setup, we can update a block and return it so fast to ensure that the plant grows and the process repeats. Because of this, zero ticking only works for plants that can be placed on sand, a falling block that we can move. Sugarcane is an exception. For the designs showcased today, cactus, kelp and bamboo have very similar designs, and sugarcane's a little different, so we will cover that last. For the first three plants, we zero tick them by displacing sand underneath them, and the setup is pretty simple. So, a zero tick farm is pretty easy to build. First we start with a redstone clock. Now, this redstone clock has to be built really specifically. And to build it, you need to build a T-shape, a, a redstone repeater on top, redstone dust forward, and a torch in the back. And now the clock has started. And something I actually forgot is to take a lever. We want to have this lever turned on for now. Next, we want to lead the redstone back. And we want to place the piston now. So for the piston, there will be two blocks. Like this. And place the piston on the further back one. And you need to place two sand on top like that. And place one block right there. There are two blocks that are very important. And they are the air block below the piston. And the block in front of the sand. I commonly forgot them when I was building this machine and it caused the machine to break every time. So now that you've built this zero tick machine, you just have to turn it on and the block on top should be getting zero ticked. To test this, you can place a block like a bamboo and it should instantly grow after we turn on our farm. Oops. So the bamboo grows really quickly because of the zero tick farm. To harvest the bamboo is also pretty simple. And I think bamboo is arguably the most simple farm design of the four. So for bamboo, all you need to do is place a piston here and take the redstone output and put it into a few redstone torches. Like so. And to lead it in here, you would want a um, repeater. So whenever the redstone, whenever the bamboo grows, it is instantly broken by the piston. And this farm is extremely loud. So to build the rest of the farm, all we need to do is just place a few blocks here. And we need a hopper that will go just at the front, like so. And over it is a glass pane, just like so. And this is your farm finished. If you wanted this thing to look nice, you'd want the ground level to be about just here. And have your farm look like this and hide all of the sand important stuff underground you would however still want this open somewhere like a walkway under here because this farm does have a tendency to break a lot and when it does the sand at the bottom needs to be replaced so that's to keep in mind so cope works a bit differently it still uses the same sand mechanism so we don't have to change that it's just that cope is a water plant so we do have to change this little chamber right here and I'm actually gonna go into third person mode to do that just because why not? There you go. Anyways, um, the height of this chamber will need to be moved one up because the water just goes there. I actually think that's it. When now, now that the water goes there, all the kelp 
goes forward, I think. So as you can see here, we're still using the same timing as normal as last time, but the kelp doesn't seem to want to cooperate. So to fix this, this is why we have the repeater in the back. I'm changing the timing by one and hope that changes something. So there you go. Now that I've played with the timing a lot, you can see that it actually does make kelp now. It took like two, two repeaters, like now that I've changed the timing, the kelp is working and this thing's also pretty insanely fast. The amount of kelp in here has already reached a stack and a bit more already. It, it's really fast, it is extremely fast. Okay, now cactus is also different from kelp, I'm gonna zoom out. There you go, I'm gonna zoom out again the full frame. I know this looks like a chair, just bear with me. So for cactus, it's basically the same thing, but you'd want to get rid of everything except the sand block for cactus. Cactus is very simple, but it is extremely annoying to harvest because cactus is extremely unpredictable. And we will place it down. And all we need is a block on the side of the cactus. And that's basically cactus done. Cactus is much slower to zero tick than other plants, do note. And the annoying thing about cactus is you saw there the cactus plant just broke and it wasn't it didn't get dropped on the ground. So there will be stacks of cactus that break and just do not get picked up. So there you go. The least you get the least amount of cactus wasted if the block behind the cactus is a fence post. So one thing to note about these farms is that they are very fragile and there are three things you cannot do. You cannot place a block on top of the zero tick sand while it's being zero ticked or else it will collapse. So turn off your machine before you modify it. You also cannot leave the loaded area where the farms are running or you'll return to find them broken, meaning the sand goes through the pistons. This one's a more technical one, but it will break your farm nonetheless. You cannot build it on a chunk border. I did that without realizing and it constantly broke my farm. No! Oh come on! So these farms, although extremely efficient, they are also extremely fragile and will self-destruct if you're not careful. So sugarcane's a bit different and it is different because we can't use the same sand technique as the other farms. Instead we have to mess with the water around the sugarcane block and we do that using dispensers. So for it to work properly, the dispensers need to be alternating the water between the block, meaning when one is on, the other is off, and they'll swap rapidly and that will zero tick the sugarcane. Dispensers are weird in Minecraft, so the wiring has to be done in this way, or else it do just doesn't work. You, can't, you cannot power this block with the clock that I'm using, or else it doesn't work. So we make a, red, a quick redstone comparator clock and that will quickly do that. Ah, f So take two, one of these has to be on at all times. One of these dispensers will always have water and the other one won't. So whenever we redstone power them, they will flip. And I think this is literally all you need for the sugarcane farm. After this, you just need to place your sugar cane and it will get zero ticked. Uh, there you go, there's a zero tick. Sugar cane isn't that fast to get zero ticked. I don't think so. This farm is still extremely fast and even if you're doing it manually, you can walk back to a sugar cane plant. Every time you walk past it, it will have grown and you can just get sugar cane like that. Or you can automate it, and the automation is pretty easy. You can use observers, or you can wire a piston up to the clock, but that gets really messy. So I found a really quick and cheap way to do it. And it's a mechanic that I didn't know existed until I built this myself, and it's a redstone torch burnout clock, which acts as a block detector. So this redstone clock will burn out 
and the moment that a block is placed, it will trigger. So that's a good way to detect when your sugar cane is ground. So you'd want to turn on the machine, and when the sugar cane grows, the burnout clock will trigger and don't uh, push it for you. You would want to place blocks on the side to make sure sugar cane doesn't fall out, but for test purposes, this is what we're going to build. So that's about the tutorial finished, and I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want the rates, they're on the screen now, and they are tested over 5 minutes and multiplied by 12 to get an hour, because these farms are relatively consistent. I hope you enjoyed this video, if you want to follow me on Twitter, my link is in the description, and I'll see you next video. Have fun building these farms in Minecraft, signing off from A2K, see ya!